Welcome to Hey Sister. This is episode 57, Comfort and Joy. Hey, sister. Hey, sister. Join me, Courtney Lewis. And me, Carly Ferguson. In our conversational podcast about everyday situations. You can count on us to tell it to you straight with our own sisterly spin. Consider this a phone call with your own Southern sisters as we discuss with you personal accountability, healthy relationships, managing responsibilities, and contributing to society. Each episode will consist of straight talk and a call to action. Your sisters are calling. Thanks for answering. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hey Sister. I'm Carly, and my sister Courtney and I are so happy y'all are joining us for today's heartwarming conversation about how to find joy in our lives when sometimes it feels like we live in a comfortless and chaotic world. Before I turn the time over to Courtney to introduce our guest expert today, we just want to take a second to welcome any first-time listeners to our sisterhood. So, hey sister, you're in the right place. We encourage you to check out any of our previous episodes over the past year on your favorite podcast platform or over at heysisterpodcast.org. You can find resources including websites or any social media links we share today in our show notes, along with the minute marker timeline in case you want to re-listen to a particular section of today's call. And of course, in our show notes, you'll also find a recap of our call to action that will be issued toward the end of this episode. Now, Courtney, take it away, sister. With pleasure. As y'all know, Carly and I are big fans of themes, and we have had a lot of fun coming up with various monthly themes over the past year. Some of our themes, for example, have covered self-improvement, spring cleaning, getting vacation ready, motherhood, hot topics, back to school lessons, and now we're drawing close to the end of our Feel Good Fall series, which has been just what the doctor ordered, if I do say so myself. In fact, the other day, I saw a visual representation of how this series makes me feel, and I just have to share it with y'all. It's November in Arizona, which means it is finally starting to feel like fall during the day with perfect 75-degree weather, but by night, it feels like full-blown winter because we live in a dry climate. I like to relate it to the planet Mercury, which, because it is so close to the sun, can get up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, but at night can drop as low as negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. You might think I'm exaggerating, but the other night as I stood on the sideline watching my husband coach my son's soccer team, the Devil Penguins, by the way, how's that for a (laughs) unique name? I witnessed every kid run up to practice shivering, bundled in coats and gloves and beanies. My phone said it was only 58 degrees, but the children's body language on the field made it look much colder. One mom, an Arizona native, strolled up with her three kids. One ran on the field to practice. One joined the gaggle of teammate siblings playing off to the side, and her littlest wanted to get bundled up in a camping chair. I watched as the sweet mama took the time to gently tuck this little toddler in. She already had on winter attire from head to toe, but now her mama made sure absolutely no cold night air would chill the body of her little one. By the end, I heard the mom ask, are you good? There was a short pause, and the toddler replied, my cheeks are cold. Her mom kind of chuckled and adjusted the blanket slightly, but the situation just had all of us moms laughing and imagining how nice it would be to have someone take that much time and consideration to tend to our comfort in a cold world. I thought about that question, are you good? As we've been doing this feel good fall series, am I good? Is it someone else's responsibility to tuck me in? Would I even let someone else tuck me in? Is there anything I can do or a mindset I can adopt to feel more comfort and joy on a cold night? The idea of a mindset that lends itself to joy is what led Carly and I to today's guest expert. Susan Chapman is a wildly creative, overly generous, faith-filled mother of six kids who lives in Tucson, Arizona. She is a content creator with inspiring DIY projects on Instagram, where you can find her at Joy in Becoming. I am blessed to have Susan as a friend and positive influence in my life. She has a gift for making others feel valued, sharing her faith, and finding joy in becoming her best self. I love this woman dearly, and I'm so excited she is joining us today to bid our sisterhood tidings of comfort and joy. With all that, Susan, welcome to Hey Sister. Thank you. I'm like blushing over here. That was such a nice intro. Thank you. (laughs) We're so glad you're here. As you well know, I could say so much more about you and the huge blessing you've been in my life and the wonderful friend you are. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking me. It's been a good reflective experience to think on why I love this topic so much because I am very passionate about this and 
I wasn't always. And I think that's probably why I've become so passionate about it because this simple mind shift has just altered the trajectory forward where I'm not stuck in like a perfectionist mindset where I'm constantly unhappy. Susan, could you actually explain to our sisterhood a little bit more about yourself and your life and why this mindset is so important to you? I was a 19 year old bride, right? (laughs) (laughs) Who had a honeymoon baby. So I went from childhood to adulthood in like the blink of an eye and with no real time to change, you know, like that maturing process. And so I would say the first 10 years of our marriage I was constantly trying new things, creating something because I knew I needed creating for my own mental well-being. And so I would take on these big projects, whether it was some craft I decided to do or somebody at church asked me to do a party or a birthday party for my kids. And I would hate the whole process. (laughs) It would end in tears to the point that my husband would ask me, why are you doing this? I'm all, because I love it. And he's like, do you? (laughs) And I loved the finished product. So I loved the party once it was done. I loved the craft I had made. I loved the vacation we had planned when we were in it. But the process was miserable. And that reflection of him asking me, like, why are you doing this? Like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through constant heartache and struggle and hating every minute of it? And I feel like God talks to me through everyday experiences. I felt like he looked at me and he's like, do you see this? Do you (laughs) see the parallel here? You're just enduring life. You're not finding joy out of it because you're waiting till the end to find joy. You're waiting till your kids are older or you've accomplished this thing. You're not enjoying the process that life is meant to be enjoyed. It's not just meant to be endured. And so that mind shift was like, ah, to me. (laughs) And I think that's why I feel so passionate because before that, I really was an unhappy perfectionist who was never finding fulfillment because it was never good enough. So Susan, how can finding this joy in our daily or maybe even hourly life, right? Like in that process, help us feel good this fall and on. I think it's becoming very intentional. So I don't like making dinner. (laughs) Like it's not my favorite thing. And I think we all have those little tasks that we're like, this is not fun. And taking this kind of mindset of like, well, what can I do to make this a more enjoyable process? Okay. I asked my boys, they're now old enough to come and help me. So now this is time for them to tell me about their day. And I love being with them. So it's okay. What can I do every day? to have a glimpse or a moment that is uplifting or joyful. And life is really hard. (laughs) I was having a conversation with some of my friends and it was that like, life is really hard for everyone. And it's also absolutely beautiful for everyone. And I remember my mom, when I went off to college and her sage advice to me was, you're going to find what you're looking for. And it's that concept of like, am I being intentional every day to find moments of joy? And sometimes in a day, it's 30 seconds, not maybe all you got. (laughs) But if you're not looking for it, you don't even have those 30 seconds at the end of the day to look forward to. You're just enduring. So I think by dancing in the kitchen with a child, or I loved in your past podcast where she talked about looking at the sunset every day. I can't remember who it was, but I love that was Aubrey Grossen. Yeah. Where she was like, Oh, I love this looking for the sunset. I know in that moment, I'm going to just take this 30 seconds to appreciate something in my life. And I think that little shift can help when it is really hard. So I didn't say this in the intro, but I am a widow. My husband passed away maybe 15 months ago and there have been heart wrenching moments. I mean, as you would imagine. But there have also been beautiful moments that I would not have if I wasn't a widow. I feel as though the Lord has guided me to have my eyes more open before he passed so that once he passed, I could still go forward with my eyes wide open. So I could say like this beautiful moment is going to have to carry me through some of these really hard moments. And with that same idea of everyone has hard and 
we always get through it. That has helped as well. And I think that can help in those difficult moments of I won't always be here. This moment is really hard and that's okay. And give yourself that grace and that freedom to feel that hard and know it'll get better. (laughs) And so, yeah, fall days, cold months and going into winter, like it does sometimes creep in, you know, the little seasonal depression can creep in and saying, okay, I know right now I feel a little bit sad, but how can I intentionally find that joy? Number one. And then number two, give yourself a little grace that tomorrow will be better. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you said that life is hard and it's also beautiful. And I think it is important for us to remember that it's not mutually exclusive. With that said, like if you want love to grow, or if you want those good things to grow, you need to tend to them or at least notice them, notice the sunsets, notice that your boys are in the kitchen with you while you're cooking. And it does take, like you've said, being intentional, being thoughtful about what's around you and kind of looking up to that and then Keeping your eyes on that, you know? (laughs) And Susan, I know your experience becoming a widow over the past year and a half has been probably the biggest life change that you've ever experienced, I can imagine, aside from a honeymoon baby. I feel like that's also a pretty life-changing experience to go from childhood to being a mother. But I find it very inspirational now to hear you say this, but also during our friendship over the past years to see how you really have taken this life challenge in stride and that you still strive for this joy in becoming, that you are such a beacon of joy to others and that you can even say life is hard and that you don't say that with any sort of, okay, but like, let's all take a moment here to acknowledge that my heart is, is really hard, Sure, you know? And so I appreciate that you give us all permission to groan a little bit and grumble, but also to remind everyone if I can find joy So can you, and I know you don't say it with that attitude of if I can do it, you can do it. But can I just say, I find that really motivational to me that during a year and a half that you've experienced hard loss, that you're still able to move forward and onward and be a wonderful mother and friend, and also still a wife, as I know that this week was a 25th year anniversary for you and Ryan. So I, I'm grateful for your example and joy. I think too, just as like everyone has hard and everyone has beautiful, another great momism from my mom (laughs) is there is always someone who has it better than you. And there's always someone who has it worse than you. Right. So don't negate your hard, but also don't take away from your joy because someone else has it better. Allow yourself to lean into that joy. Don't feel guilty because you have something more than someone else or because you feel happy. Do I mean like lean into those moments because yes, someone has more and someone has less. And in both situations, they have the ability to find joy and hardship. And so lean into the joyful moments and really seek for them. Because sometimes in like the heart, they don't come naturally. And some people, they come much more naturally than others. Marjorie Hinckley to me is the prime example of optimism and finding joy. I just think she's a happy person by nature. And she came across me as someone who just like exudes joy. And then there are other people who it's like, we have to search for it because it isn't just naturally on our shoulder. I appreciate you saying that too, because in this world that we don't necessarily want to compare ourselves to others, the natural human tendency is to recognize your joys versus somebody else's joys, your struggles versus somebody else's struggles. So I love that you're saying what your mom said of somebody's always going to have it harder and somebody's always going to have it easier or better than you. However, your mom said, it, I appreciate that because I think that's true. And it's okay to acknowledge that, but also not let that be an all consuming thought. So how do you find joy in your life, Susan? Now, like what is your formula to find joy? I mean, I would say number one is letting go of perfection. (laughs) celebrating the failures, which is also something I would say over the past five years, I've leaned into that failure is a teaching tool and how awesome that I just learned how not to do that. And so I think that's been a really big one so that I'm willing to try new things and I'm willing to just experiment. Even as a young child, creating has been essential part of who I am. It is my lifeline where I feel like when I'm creating, God speaks to me. My mind goes quiet. I can hear him. I can hear peace. I can think clearer. So like I have to be creating in some form, especially when life is hard. 
that takes many forms for me. <laughs> like I love DIY projects, but it also can be creating an experience with my kids or creating relationships, creating time for study, creating in writing. Like for me, it takes many forms, but ultimately it's some form of creating brings me the greatest clarity, which helps me find space for joy. So you're saying creating brings joy. And like you were saying earlier in your marriage that your husband would be like, does it bring you joy? Because during the process, it was more stressful and you weren't finding those moments of stillness. So that's something that you've clearly practiced to get to that point of it bringing you that fulfillment during the process. Because it did not used to. (laughs) Like I really would say maybe last five, 10 years, it feels like the more I do it, the more clarity and peace I get. There were moments that were so hard when Ryan was really sick that I would need to take an hour (laughs) to go sand some wood. And it was like, I would cry through that and it would settle my mind. And that's going to look different for everyone. Everyone's going to have to find what is their quieting and what is their thing that brings them joy. But for me, (laughs) it has become that. I love that. And I feel like it takes a lot of introspection. And so hearing that someone loves to create this or something else. Like Courtney is a words person and I am not. She loves to write things and is very gifted in her words. And I don't find joy necessarily in that, (laughs) but I really like color schemes and images and things like that. Not to say that we can't dabble in whatever, whenever we want. I'm always about, you don't have to feel confined to something (laughs) just because you've liked that in the past. You can always try new things too, but it is important to reflect on yourself and take that time to be intentional about what you want to do and what you want to gain from doing that. Was there anything else on your, how do you find joy list that you'd like to share with us, Susan? Another way that I find joy and ultimately the highest one for me is turning to my savior and trusting him. So I would say dealing with all of the hardship with losing my spouse, learning to trust that God knows more than I do helped me to never be angry at him. I don't like that my husband's gone, but I know that God knows more than I do. And so when I can remember that, like, obviously I'm not, I was going to remember that and I'm going to be imperfect in that. But when I can remember that, all of the hurt can kind of be let go. I can find joy in the fact that God knows what I don't. And so I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't even have to have tomorrow figured out (laughs) because he knows what I don't. And he foresees what I'm going to need in the future and is already taking care of today what I'm going to need tomorrow. Ultimately, I think leaning into that and discovering that relationship. I loved in church on Sunday, a woman shared that she spent time with Jesus every day. Yes. And I was just like, I love this concept, like the way she worded it. And that is like a prime way to find joy. Yeah. Spend time with Jesus. <laughs> I remember that comment that this woman said, and I don't even remember her name. She was visiting our <laughs> church congregation. And she said, I've stopped calling my scripture study, scripture study in my planner. And so I just write down time with Jesus. And it was so cute and I loved it. And I thought that is a great way to think of it. I thought about how Jesus really does fill in the cracks. We have to allow it. Like you talked about the beginning, Courtney, in that story of the mom and the little girl, like, would I be able to be tucked in? I don't know. Sometimes we've got this, like, I can do it mentality that it's supposed to be shielding us, but it can also shield us from that grace and those feelings of comfort that can be let in if we can allow it. And I have three little boys and I've mentioned that every episode, (laughs) right? (laughs) They are fairly close in age. And I feel like I've just kind of turned a corner where before I thought I kind of did this to myself. I can't expect anyone else to help. You didn't, you didn't do it to yourself. Well, no. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> By science. That is correct. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Sorry. Sorry. I couldn't help it. 
All right. Yes. So I have these. I'm blushing now. I know. Thanks for that, Court. I have these three boys. And for that while, I was just thinking, this is hard. And when people would ask, like, how do you do it? Or like, you've got your hands full from across the parking lot. I'd be like, yeah, I'm taking the heat now. But they say that boys are easier when they get older. I've got these kinds of canned responses. And now I've gotten to this point where I'm like, this is great. This is awesome. And I think the change was me and less them and more myself taking the opportunities to really just sit into the moment of craziness that ensues when a package comes to the door and the boys just all flock to the door and start like chanting and screaming. And there's so much hype going on. And I'm like, this is not (laughs) special ops hoorah kind of feeling but for some reason they're like all kinds of energy and it just makes me laugh so where there is the side of it where it's like why can't we keep anything clean and must everything break and all these things go on that everyone can probably relate to just being grateful for those things and changing my perspective a little bit my mother-in-law she has 13 children. Holy moly. So you can only imagine the comments she would get. Ah. And I loved being with her when someone would say, oh, wow, you really have your hands full. And she would say, yes, and isn't it wonderful? And she would shift that. And it caused me to, like you're saying, being more intentional with my joy and having my kids hear someone call them difficult in their own way. You know, people say it. And for them to hear me say like, oh, but isn't it wonderful? Aren't they amazing? Aren't boys so much fun? Even if that day I want to pull my hair out because they're (laughs) driving me crazy. She helped me to make that shift of, oh, but I want them to hear that I am so grateful they're here. Even if I'm stretching in my own mind to say that, (laughs) but that is one of those little ways that we can intentionally find joy is just by shifting just something so minor And even if it feels like a lie coming out of your mouth at first, (laughs) but this is joyful. Like you're saying, I chose this hard and there are joyful moments. So, okay. (laughs) They need to hear that. I am glad they're here too. I think that's a good point to make in a world that there's all these hashtags of children are the worst. (laughs) And it's like, people say that all the time. And I've even been guilty of saying that. And we all have, but to hear y'all too say these reminders of, We can do better as mothers to not rag on our kids in public and with an earshot of them. And I will say, I give my mom a lot of credit because when we were kids, I never heard her once rag on us to other people. And that made a huge difference in my self-confidence, I'm fairly certain, because I even remember one time a youth church leader told me, you be careful because when you're older, you're going to have a kid just like you one day. And I remember I looked at her, I go, I hope so. My mom says I'm a good kid. Like I was so proud of who I was that I was like, yeah, I hope I have a kid just like me. And then I do laugh now because my son Cruz is just like me. And it's funny because we'll just say he's particular. He's a great kid. I can reflect on times when it was like a certain child and I were struggling. And it was particularly hard to be like, oh, I'm so grateful for this child. Just because there are hard times in everyone, just in growing up. And so there's like a specific time period that I feel like has been hard for all my kids. <laughs> and it's in those moments, again, that I've had to like turn to God and say, I can't see the joy in this child right now, but I know you can. So can you just give me like a little piece of your joy? Even if 23 hours and 59 minutes, I'm struggling <laughs> for one minute. Can you give me a piece of your joy so I can remember that they are your child? I'm going to bring it back to that. Like it's hard, but it's beautiful. So find the moment, even if it is one moment, find that moment of joy and beautiful. I love love that. Actually, let's talk about that. So you're talking about finding those little moments. Susan, I would love to hear from you. What benefits short-term and long-term you've found in your life and in your kids' lives since embracing the joy and becoming outlook? The first one that comes to my mind is that we laugh a lot more. We laugh easier and more frequently. (laughs) And I think part of that comes from looking for good moments. I'm going to bring it back to my mother-in-law again. I remember this moment because, okay, (laughs) I was pregnant twice with my mother-in-law. Okay. Let that (laughs) same time. (laughs) So my, (laughs) like the movie. Yes. So my two oldest children are the same age as her two youngest children. 
I got like a firsthand look at how she parented a toddler because she's parenting a toddler the same time I'm parenting a toddler. And (laughs) I laugh every time I think of this story, you know, the like Costco size containers of canola oil. Yeah. Really big. And he had taken that and dumped the entire thing out on the kitchen floor. Oh, I'm like a first time mom. Oh. I, we both come in and see us. I'm so stressed out, right? Like thinking about that, I saw you guys both go, <gasps> right? Yeah. Wait, wait, was it her son or your son? It was her son. Okay. And so she got out the camera and she took a picture and laughed because she was just like, I just learned long time ago that if I took a picture of it, it seemed funnier. And yeah. then I could just let it go and we could move on. And I remember her laughing at her teenagers before I had teenagers. And I'm like, but they're so naughty. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, teenagers are fantastic. She really did model that for me of like how to just laugh more by looking for the joy, being intentional and finding the joy. So that's like a really small benefit, I feel like, to being intentional. I would say a more long-term one is that my kids are learning that failure is a beautiful thing failure it's like oh my gosh you failed but what did you learn from it like now okay what is the tool that you've learned that maybe you didn't know before okay you learned how not to do that or you learned that maybe you have to shoot the basket five times before making a shot but on the sixth one you always make a shot and so I'm hoping that that's instilling in them I shift in okay let's look for the good in this how did you learn how did you become better by that failure I think the long term is that life is hard for everyone. Kind of how I said that earlier, life is hard and it's beautiful. And so give people more grace and allow them to fail as well and allow them to figure it out. And then you can have greater joy because you're no longer having harshness towards others. Like you're not upset with others because you're giving them the grace to figure it out. Just like you are trying to figure it out. Yeah. Now I say all this and I recognize we fail at this too. <laughs> yeah. This is a learning curve for us, but this is what we're striving for. My older children, I'm like, sorry, you were my guinea pig kids. But I feel like I expected too much from them because my perfectionistic nature wanted them to also achieve perfection. Like, oh, it wasn't quite good enough. And then learning like, oh my gosh, you just tried. I love that you just tried something totally different. And okay, you weren't great at it, but did you enjoy it? Did you learn from it? Just that shift that I'm hoping my kids recognize failure is a beautiful thing. Awesome. So Susan, what is one doable call to action our sisterhood can incorporate this week? I love that you asked this because this is something I'm going to work on too. And I think it is finding beauty in something you ordinarily wouldn't find beauty in. And that really could be the child you're struggling with, a task that seems daunting and not good enough, a relationship that isn't what you want it to be, something you're learning how to do. Take the moment to be like, okay, what is the beauty in this? It can be 30 seconds. But every day this week, every single day, take 30 seconds to find joy in something you wouldn't typically find joy in. Well, I absolutely love that call to action. I know at the beginning of this episode, we mentioned your Instagram account, Susan, but as a recap for our sisters, could you tell our sisterhood where they can find you if they want to learn more and see some of the beautiful inspirational posts that you do? Yeah, it's joy in becoming. Awesome. And Susan, I think this would be a great time for us to tell our sisterhood about a next thing that we'll be seeing from you soon. So could you talk a little bit about your upcoming exciting news? Yes. As you can tell, I'm clearly passionate about joy and becoming or finding joy in the process of life. So I am working on a podcast to address these issues. How do we find joy when? And hitting on all the things that are just really hard. And how do we take the time and dig in and lean into that joy, even when it feels unbearable or even when it feels especially difficult. And the hope is to give women joy and hope that when we're stuck in those moments, we will be able to get out of it. And there is a path forward. 
Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. So sisters, we will be sure to include links to Susan's Instagram handle at Joy and Becoming. And when her podcast is live, we'll definitely feature that on Instagram as well. And we'll update the show notes for this episode when that is live so that you can find the link to her podcast so you can learn more from Susan there. We are so grateful that you've joined us today, Susan. Sisters, we hope y'all have enjoyed today's call with our new sister, Susan, from Joy and Becoming as much as we have. We are so grateful for the time we get to spend with y'all each week, and we love connecting with you on social media too. So please be sure to follow us on Instagram at the Hey Sister Podcast to connect with us as we continue conversations about today's episode online. Don't forget to apply this week's call to action. And as a recap, that is to find joy every single day in something that you wouldn't ordinarily find joy in. Please come back and join us next week as we conclude our Feel Good Fall series. We'll talk to y'all next week, sisters. Bye-bye. Bye. You can find resources including websites or any other... We can... Okay, sorry. This <laughs> is a mouthful today. I know. I gave you a lot of announcements. You know, you did. Courtney writes my script for me. It's really nice. If only I had her for the rest of, you know, my, your life. My life. <laughs> I would love. To, I would love to write your scripts for the rest of your life. I take that back. I, as a second child, middle child, prefer to be unscripted most times.